Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, today I am back on my friend Michaela's Christmas tree farm that she's turning into a permaculture farm. So I'm like literally in the field right now. I was like trying to find a good spot for the lighting, and I'm still like, is my camera backwards? Is everything working? <laughs> I don't know if I just made it. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. Um, today I'm feeling like really in my body, really in spirit, very much in my feminine energy of the beingness. <sighs> and I am excited to share this vibration with you because it's very yummy. And I know that by sharing this podcast, you will also be able to receive some of this yummy energy. I almost didn't make a podcast because I was like, I could just lay here. <laughs> and then I I, when I was laying there, I had all these downloads of so many things I'm excited to share with you that I just started journaling them. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to make a podcast and everyone can just feel how yummy my energy is. <sighs> so in no particular order, because that is the feminine, <laughs> we are going to get through all of these. Um, something that I was reading the other day is how like feminine energy is really about letting go of all of the um all of the masks that these layers of protection that we have put up for ourselves um i wrote down like feminine energy is stripping all the layers of protection and being your most authentic self and i feel like uh, a lot of us women especially so we have everyone has feminine and masculine energy inside of us and also those that are leading with their feminine energy whether you're a man or a woman in, in your body whatever your body is if you're leading with your feminine energy and you want to be more in your feminine energy I find it ironic that a lot of us think that we need to do more we actually think we need to do something in order to be more in our feminine energy when in reality what we what what we can do uh, in order to be more in our feminine energy is actually do less <laughs> it's actually about feeling safe in our body so something that you can do is create safety within your body in order to allow yourself to feel safe because to feel safe to be in your feminine because being in your feminine is actually about stripping away all of the things that are not you which is which is usually like masks that we have put on top of ourselves or in between us and other people energetically in order to protect ourselves. So it's not anything negative that we are not in our feminine. It's not a bad thing. There's no good or bad at any of this. It's about creating enough safety within our bodies and in our environment. So that means like the people that we are associating with, people that we are sharing our energy with, so that we don't need to have these barriers, so that we can actually just feel safe to be ourselves. And like being in our feminine energy is actually just allowing ourselves to relax into our most authentic selves. So all these layers of protection are gone. And the reason why this is so vulnerable is because it's literally like, you know, say you're standing in front of someone else. Well, your, your energetic, your emotional barriers that you have put up, if you're really in your feminine, they're not there. So you are exposed, you are vulnerable, you are naked emotionally and energetically standing before someone else. And that is really vulnerable. And also that is really beautiful because that's where the real connection happens. That's where we really feel the most alive because being alive is allowing yourself to be in your body, is allowing yourself to feel... <sighs> And allowing yourself to be present with whatever emotions are coming up without, without judging them, with just loving them. Okay, I'm feeling this. I'm going to share this with you. I'm being fully present with what's alive in me right now. And I'm open to sharing this with you. And I'm open to, you know, sharing what you have or receiving what you have in your body and what's present for you. And like interchanging this emotional, energetic reality with each other. That is what being in the feminine is and 
it feels really yummy when you're in this energy because you're just actually allowing yourself to like connect to someone from your true essence and for me that is what makes me feel the most alive in this world yes i love to go travel yes i love to have all the beautiful experiences of like adventure and Yes, I like to be in my masculine as well and like create beautiful things in the world. Like masculine is the doing, it's the creating things in the physical reality that we are currently in and the feminine energy in all of us. So this doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, you're, all of this applies to everyone. It's like your masculine energy is the one that is like externally doing things. It's going for things, it's creating things. And your feminine energy is the receiving things, things, emotions, receiving energy, allowing yourself to be in your body. And even if it feels bad, quote unquote, without judgment, even if you're feeling what we would consider negative feelings like sadness, frustration, anger, lost, confused, it's like, even if the world feels like it's ending, in that moment energetically or emotionally for you it's also really beautiful because we are here as humans in this current dimension to feel the full range of emotions of our reality so if you are denying yourself to feel if you are denying yourself to feel negative emotions you're actually denying yourself to be fully alive you're actually living half life or maybe not living at all because so many people are so worried about feeling negative emotions that they shut down all of their emotional reality they go completely in their head they're no longer in their body and when you're completely in your head and you're not in your body you're not actually living you might as well be a robot (laughs) i was talking to my friend feta the other day and he's such a good friend of mine soul family we had a love story at one point we might have another one in the future i just love him so much (laughs) and he was telling me the story about how like you know i i i've known him for about four years now and when we were in a love story together um (laughs) he wasn't emotionally there he's he's half german half italian but he grew up mostly in germany and he grew up mostly in his head and so i'm telling him all these things and teaching him like emotional tools and how to be in your body we went through a tantra immersion together so he was able to learn some tools and energy work and we really have such a strong energy connection and at the same time when we were out of that bubble you know when he went back to germany he went back into his head and he went back into living from the reality of not feeling his feelings because that's like what he grew up with and I just keep loving him and I just I know that he'll get there and then we had a call the other day and he's like telling me about how he connected with this woman in Germany and um, like he's back in Europe for the summer and he connected with this girl and they had a beautiful love story he ended up staying with her and then she had um, she kind of like emotionally freaked out like she got really scared of the connection And he was like, Brittany, all the things that you're saying about how women like don't feel safe around the masculine, how they don't feel safe around being vulnerable with men, because for most of their life, men were not literally not there emotionally. So they're just kind of dealing with these like emotional robots. (laughs) He was like, I know intellectually all the things that you're saying, but I had never been in a situation where I actually had my heart open and I wanted to connect with someone and they weren't fully present they weren't able to feel safe enough to drop in their bodies and be emotionally vulnerable with me and he was just like oh my god I know what it feels like now and I'm so sorry that I did that to you and I was like it's okay like you you just did the best you could you know like I don't I don't have any negative feelings about it and he's like and also I want to heal this within the masculine so that women feel safe to be open and feel safe to be vulnerable Um, he's like, I want to be one of these good men that women that like can help heal the women in my life so that they feel safe to be open around men. And I told him, I said, when you do that with whoever you're, you're in connection with, when a man chooses to be the safe space for a woman to fully drop in her body and fully drop in her emotions, he's literally healing the collective because I really believe that each one of us has this opportunity to heal the whole collective because we're all connected energetically 
and we don't need to go heal the whole world we just need to heal the people that are the ones that we love that are in our lives you know and I it just makes me so happy that my close people are starting to wake up to this because for me when I I'm just heart open all the time like I don't really have a choice <laughs> this is just who I am and I was telling this time I was like I don't really have a choice I'm just this I am my authentic self I am just vulnerable and crying a lot and feeling all the things and he was just like he was just like wow this is it was he was like when I started to allow myself to feel this and really be in my body he's like it was really overwhelming and I'm like yeah sometimes it's like a fucking roller coaster <laughs> and he's like how do you do anything in the world I'm like you get better at it you get emotional tools you practice it's like a muscle that you work you know and he was like okay and then he was just saying he's like I feel like you know instead of like this black and white reality that I've lived in now things are a lot more like gray and I was like he's talking about like emotionally like you know he wasn't really feeling his emotions so everything was very black and white like I love you or I don't love you or we're doing this together or not but it's very like from your mental space and then he said like yeah now everything's a little bit gray and I was like what do you mean gray I don't feel like things are emotionally gray in my life I feel like it's like the fucking rainbow <laughs> you know there's just like so many emotional flavors and colors and he was like that's so good I love that it's not black and white it's the rainbow so this is what it's like to be in your feminine energy and even like in order for a man to be able to host a woman in her emotions and in her feminine energy he needs to be able to host himself he needs to be able to drop into his own feminine energy within his body. We all have feminine and masculine energy within ourselves. And he needs to be able to connect to his own emotions. And that's the only way that he's going to be able to hold space for the women in his life that, and the men in his life that he loves. You know, That's the only way that he's going to be able to host anyone else in their emotions. And I was thinking about like why... Why does it feel so good to be around a woman who is very dropped into her feminine body? Very dropped into her feminine energy, I guess I'll say. And this is for anyone, like anyone who comes into the vortex of a woman who's very in her feminine energy. <sighs> it's just really yummy and it just feels like coming home. And the reason the, the what i realize is that it's because she's so in her body so she's allowing herself to feel her full range of emotions right and allowing herself to be in this like raw vulnerability of like i don't know what's going to come up right now but i'm here for all of it like i'm we're in this together let's do it together you know and being in that energy helps each uh, each one of us to feel more at home in our own body. So when you're in the vibration of a woman who's deeply in her feminine, which means deeply in her body and allowing herself to just feel whatever is coming up, you know, just feeling it all and expressing it all and being okay with it all. And that, that feels like safety. That feels like coming home. And that helps each one of us to feel more safe in our bodies and more safe in our it activates each of us to feel more safe to feel all of our emotions and when we do that we feel more alive we feel more at home in our bodies i, I like to call playing this game of life like we all feel like we're actively more players in the game instead of what I call NPCs. So like you're here, but you're a non-playing character. You're just kind of like this robot that's just showing up and doing the thing and like clocking in and out of life. I'm here to be a full character in this game. And that includes feeling all of your emotions. And it's so yummy and it's so beautiful. <laughs> so we did... Um, like what day what are days so two days ago uh it was my girlfriend Michaela's birthday um and we rented this really beautiful uh farmhouse it's like on an apple orchard with kiwis they, I just love that randomly they were growing kiwis there I was like I didn't know kiwis grow grew in Washington state and like wild berries and deer and lots of just owls and like lots of beautiful wildlife and it was like right on the sea uh, and I realized later that it's basically like the Hamptons of Seattle. So um, I just found that really funny. That like wherever I end up, I like end up on a beautiful island with beautiful people doing amazing things. 
<sighs> life goals accomplished. <laughs> but so it was Michaela's, she'd never taken acid before and her boyfriend Noah and I, we went with her and we had this beautiful acid day. Well, they took acid, I smoked weed, and I definitely got contact high from, like, I am very energetically sensitive, so if someone is taking psychedelics around me and I'm connected to their energy, it's very easy for me to just tap into the vibration that they are in. And also, I really feel like all of these psychedelics are just permission slips for us to get on a certain vibration. So if you've really explored it a lot, it's very easy to tap into that vibration, like, Especially for me, when I'm on weed, I can just be on weed and be like, okay, I want to feel like I'm on MDMA. And then I just like feel like I'm on MDMA. So especially if you're around other people who are on something already. Anyways, so they, they took acid. I smoked some weed. And it was so beautiful. I like made the outdoor balcony. I put all the cushions and the carpets and the rugs. And we like laid out there and looked at the trees and... We we're just laughing a lot and I had us like walk down to the water and like you know go barefoot everywhere and there's hammocks and I was like putting them in the hammocks and like swinging I'm like you're reborn you're a baby in a cocoon you're, I don't know I was mixing all the metaphors but you know what I mean like you're gonna be a, now a beautiful butterfly uh, we were having so much fun and uh, Michaela I've known her for like 10 years so for me it's like lots of experiences that we've had lots of trust built and one of the things that I would randomly say throughout the trip was like, you're doing great. You can't like she was she's a Virgo. So she's always like, am I doing it right? And I was like, you can't mess this up. You're doing great. And the only thing you need to do is just be. And then so one time throughout the trip, I said, you're doing great. And she's like, wait, should I be doing something like am I doing? And I was like, wait, wait, no, we need to change the phrase. And so I started saying, you're being great. As in, like, you're the beingness that is you, you're doing it to the to the max. You're being your most authentic self. You're you're being great. So that's like our new saying with each other. And I had a lot of um, healing within myself on this trip that I want to share with you. But first, I'm gonna move because the sun is right. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so yeah, I smoked some weed, got some contact high, and something I realized that I was. I just had so much healing around the masculine on this trip. Like I would close my eyes and I would just think of like people, men in my life that, you know, that I've dated or my dad. And I was just like understanding so much more of why everything happened, how the energy flowed between us and just having so much compassion for, you know, the men in my life that love me and like my dad, for instance, that I know he loves me. And also he has not healed. Like I was saying before, someone can only love you. Or I don't know if I said this yet, but it's my notes. <laughs> I'll share it in a minute. But like, basically, I'll just share it now. Someone can only love you for as far as they have like loved themselves. So for me, it's like, the download I was getting was like, wow, all of these men in my life, they really, they really do love me in different ways and express that in, in whatever capacity they have. And also if they haven't met themselves and they haven't loved themselves on these deeper levels, there was no way that they were going to be able to do that for me. There is an airplane. <laughs> um, and just like, I think I was just like releasing the energy of my dad and exes that have not been able to show the love in the way that I needed and that I deserve. And what I realize is it's like this very specific frequency of someone who just doesn't love themselves very much or they have a lot of pain that they haven't processed and they don't they haven't gotten the tools to work through it. And so when they meet someone like me who is just like fully open, fully my authentic self they're just like they don't know what to do because it's shining this mirror on the parts of themselves that they haven't figured out how to love they haven't come into um self-acceptance for <sighs> and it's something i big download was like it's not my job to help them do that they need to do that work for themselves and that's okay and maybe they'll get that there in this lifetime maybe they'll get it in the next lifetime but that's not my job to fix my job is just to be me and to shine my light, to share my love with the people that I love and the people that deserve that love and can give it back to me in the same way. Um, and then I was also like, 
honoring all of the beautiful men in my life, like in this trip, like I had my eyes closed and I was like thinking all these beautiful men and how much they are. They have, I have so many amazing divine masculine men that are actually showing up for me and that are loving me in ways that are nourishing and supportive. And, and I was crying a lot because I was like, wow, I already have, I already have so many beautiful examples of men that, that are showing up for me in a way that I, that I resonate with and that I, that are able to give me the love back in a way that is like expansive and exponential. (sighs) And I was sending all these voice messages to like my soul family, my girlfriends, the guys in my life. And I was just like sending so much love and so much appreciation for everyone. And, and also like releasing these layers of like energetic connection, um, energetic, like, I had these layers of like protection around certain people because I didn't, wasn't sure if it was safe. I wasn't sure if it was safe to like show my love. I wasn't sure if it was safe for them to receive it. Like, I wasn't sure if they were actually able to receive it, you know? And on this trip, I like, I looked at a lot of this stuff and I was like realizing, oh, it is safe to receive their love. It's safe to give them because I have so much love to give. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know, is it going to overwhelm them? Because if someone doesn't love themselves and you are just heart open and you're giving them all this love, it actually can be overwhelming for them. It can feel scary for them because they're not able to hold it. They're not able to reflect it back. And so they just, it ends up feeling in their bodies like this deep unworthiness. And, and then they can reflect that back to you in reactive ways, in ways that are not very nice in ways that are not very loving and that can be really confusing if you're genuinely giving someone love just from the sheer essence of (laughs) pure authentic expression and then they're coming back at you with like negativity or criticism or you know and so I'm sharing this with you so that if you are if you are authentically sharing your love with someone and they're not able to give it back don't take it personally and if they actually are coming back at you with negativity or or in any way the energy just feels negative then um it's not it's not your problem it's not your problem to fix it it's not your problem to heal them (sighs) especially a lot of us women that are in this like i call it high priestess you know divine feminine energy where we really can hold space for ourselves and a lot of the people in our lives Sometimes we feel like we need to do the work for them because we love them so much and we want them to feel, we want them to receive the love that we are giving and we want them to be able to give the love back. But it's not our job to do it for them. Our job is just to be, literally. And for us to allow people into our lives that that create safety for our beingness, that create safety for us to elevate ourselves to even more divine expression more divine love that we can pour out because the more safety that we feel the more love that we can allow through and that's really beautiful and I was also like visualizing all of us living all my soul family and I living together on the same land and like growing our own food together and I was like crying because I'm like this is just all I want I just want all of us to live together with all of our animals and to raise our babies together and it just like made me so happy <laughs> and that, that kind of visualization is really powerful so I also invite you and activate you to in your meditations to visualize the life that you dream of your perfect life and um, and it's interesting because like today I was looking at, um, I have a 21 day transformation experience happening right now, like this course that I have launched and I have many beautiful people taking it and I put everyone into a telegram group and everyone is doing the course together. So we release the, the homework every couple days and then people can share about like how they're able to how like how are they emotionally processing this reality of like experiencing you know this homework to get like doing the thing and then also how what's coming up for them and then being in the community of everyone together supporting each other and um one of the exercises that i had them do which was to journal about what would be your perfect day so if you have all the resources in the world all the money time connections love like what would you and like and you're making the impact that you're meant to make in the world like what would you actually do and what I noticed is that so many of them are frozen that they're going to do the wrong thing like they actually have a lot of the connections resources abundance 
and they have so many opportunities and they want to make this huge impact in the world. I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I know a lot of you are in the same boat. Um, and they just don't know what to do. They're just like, they just feel overwhelmed by the sheer expanse of possibilities. And also uh, something I really want to say is that those of us that are in tune with what's happening in the world, we very much feel the energy that there is a lot that needs to be fixed. There is a lot that is going wrong in the world. And when you're one person and you're not part of a collective or a community that you feel like you can do it together, it can feel so overwhelming on like, where do I even start? You know, like, what do I even do? How can me as one person help heal the world? And I have felt that myself many times in my life. And what has helped me is to do this exercise of visualizing my perfect day. And if I don't know what, what it is that I want to do, I just start doing something. And this is something that I want to activate you is like, do something that makes the world a better place and is also fun for you. And if, if you're like, oh, there's so many things that are fun for me. There's so many things that I can make the world a better place. Just start with something. Because just by the act of doing it, you are going to start figuring out what your personal preferences are. Like you might think that this one thing is fun and then you start doing it and you're like, actually, it's not so fun for me. I just thought I had this programming that I need to help these people or I need to do this thing in the world. But really inside of my body, this is not so fun to do this every single day. And that's okay. So then you try the next thing that can help the world and that you think would be fun. Um... Oh, I want to share an example. So my friend Michaela, I'm here at her farmhouse and um, she is like me. We're both rising Aquarius in the sense that like we can feel the energy in the world. We want to make the world a better place. We choose to do things that are helping the world. And her and I were having a conversation the other day when we were going to the gym. We got, we got our, our morning drinks and we had our little spiritual chat before we go into the gym which I love so much. It's so fun to be around soul family that are like on the same soul mission and like feel like, okay, we need to do this as a collective. Like what can we do to make the world a better place? And she was sharing with me that just this, like, this, like I was just saying, the kind of this sheer overwhelm of like, I don't feel like I'm doing enough or I feel like I want to be doing more and this kind of like feeling guilty, but also frozen at the same time. And also, which, which is something I reflected to her, I said, Michaela, you're following what is your joy right now, right? And she's like, yeah. And her joy right now is she inherited this huge farm that, you know, was in her family for generations with her sisters. So, um, and it was a Christmas tree farm. And now they're all taking permaculture courses and they want to turn it into a farm where they can literally eat the food from the land and it can be sustainable and and it's actually you know working with what the land actually wants and listening to the nature here and like doing what is nourishing for the land that which is therefore going to nourish them so i said to her i was like what if you're already doing your soul mission you know like what if you are actually doing what is meant to be for you in this timeline because there might be a time in the future where we all need to eat food off of the land and there isn't that much food available. You never know, right? And we're all going to come to you because you have a whole like 20 acres of permaculture land that you have developed uh, and created into this beautiful project where it can feed uh, villages, you know? And she was, we were both laughing because we're just like, it's so funny how we always feel like we should be doing more. But the thing that you're doing right now that is actually bringing you joy, that's probably going to be the thing that needs to happen in the collective. Like your soul is always guiding you. And I think it's more about us trusting that our soul is guiding us and that we're actually on path. And I, have, I also a lot of times say affirmations to myself, like I'm on my divine path. I'm fully supported. I'm guided. Like whatever is meant to happen is happening. Um, and when I think back on all the things that I have done in my life, um, I realized that all of it was, le is like baby steps for me to get to this point. It was all like leading me in the direction of my soul mission. And everything that I have done up until this point, even if n after doing it, I realize it's something I don't prefer. It still helped me. It's still part of the soul mission. 
I, I think about like working in law for six years and then being a business consultant for like large corporations. And I, I was like, why did I do that? Like, how is that part of my soul mission? And then I think, oh, wow, in that time period, I was learning how I call it the old world, the matrix works. And I was helping also shining my light in that world. And I really feel that our generation or anyone who's listening to this, you're part of this generation of us who are bridging from the old earth vibration to the new earth vibration. It's all a vibration first before it comes into the 3D reality. And in order for me to bridge that, I needed to understand how the old world like really worked. And <laughs> let me tell you, I really understand how it works. I do not prefer it, but I understand how it works. And it helps me to be able to speak to people in the old earth vibration, in the matrix, whatever you want to call it. Because I very, I kind of jokingly called myself like this spy that was like on the inside, even though the whole time I knew I had this big soul mission, I was just doing all these like very quote unquote normal life things. Um, but it, it helped me to understand like how people work and how they think and how the world works. And then I think about how I had, I was part of building a travel company and consulting to launch co-working spaces and co-living spaces and how I made my own remote collective community space on Koh Panyang. And I think like, why did I do that? You know, like, how is that, how is that part of my soul mission? And then I realized like, wow, all of these things were me learning how to be a better leader. These were baby steps in me understanding how to be a new earth leader like how to lead people in a way that is dropped into your body that is spiritually awake and also you have boundaries like how how do we do this because you know something that I was also talking to Michaela with the, about the other day I was talking with Michaela about the other day <laughs> words <sighs> is that um, our generation doesn't have that many examples of good role models in leadership so like a lot of us have a very negative connotation like we have a negative definition of what a leader is because we've had so many people who are in positions of leadership in the world whether it's religion government it doesn't matter it could be a local community um, even in this, the new or spiritual communities there is a lot of leadership that isn't actually very positive it's very ego centered it's not very heart led you know and then we were just laughing because we were like, well, maybe we're meant to be the leaders. <laughs> you know, like um, all this time we're searching for, I have spent so many years searching for someone to follow. Like, where are the leaders of the new earth? I, I want to support you. Like, where are you? Like, let me, let me join your cause. And I didn't find any that I resonated with. Of course, I have mentors. I have soul family that are supporting me and becoming the person that I am. But they're not like actively leading a community. And I was like, I have this soul mission of like, we need to bring everyone together. We need to create a tribe. We need to make this new earth community. Let's lead this together. And not necessarily that we need to all live together, but we need to feel like energetically we're on this mission together. And then I was like, oh, so all of these things that I had been doing over the last 10 years involved in community leadership was helping me to not only release my negative definitions of what leadership is, but also helping me to become the leader that I'm meant to be in the world. Because let me tell you, I was not this good of a leader, but I wasn't, I needed to learn a lot of things. I, <laughs> leadership is not easy and it's like, it's not made for everyone. And it's not actually, it's not about having 2 million followers on, on Instagram. It's like taking care of people and really making sure that we are safe and we are provided for. It's literally like, being the mother and father of like a whole community and being a mom to three kids is very different to being a mom to a million people um, and that's also it's just something that I know my soul has called me to do and I'm here for all of it you know and I'm not saying that I'm perfect I'm not saying that I even know what I'm doing <laughs> I just know that this is part of my soul mission so what I'm trying to tell you is that just do something like if you're in this feeling of frozen overwhelm and you also really want to help the world to be a better place just find something that makes you excited and that is helping the world in some way and just do it just do it just do it <laughs> and it will lead you to the next thing that you're meant to do it will lead you to the to the bigger expansion of your soul mission everything leads you to the next thing I call it the listening to the whispers of your heart because they are always leading you. 
and the sun is very much in my eyes again one second so this is also why I really love human design because for me it helped me to understand what was my soul mission like I I think we all intuitively know who we are and what we're meant to do and also we have so much programming as a society of like this is what you should do and also as a religious or community whatever you're part of it is going to condition you like wherever you grew up whatever society community religion government anything that you're connected with energetically it's going to program you to assimilate to that culture in order to feel like you deserve connection when in reality we are all worthy of connection just for being our most authentic selves just for being <laughs> and also each one of us has a soul mission so whether you resonate with human design or something else there's so many spiritual tools out there that help you to understand who you are and i invite you to go and find the ones that resonate with you and go down this journey your hero or heroine's journey of figuring out who you are and what your soul mission is um and something i want to say here is that like everyone especially the women who are listening to this especially my sisters out there um i'm activating you and this is an invitation for you to do something today that brings up a feeling of fear in you so like you know i like you have this intuition that this is a thing that is good for you this is going to bring you down the path that you need to go and yet it's scary because there's growth there anytime you're afraid of something there's growth and also it's an opportunity to trust the universe that you are guided you are protected everything's happening for you and that the universe has your back it's like showing up for you it's supporting you right so i invite you to be brave and do the thing which scares you which you know will actually make your life better. <laughs> so uh, some examples can be like reaching out to someone and telling them how much you care about them, like sharing some love with someone like this is so beautiful. It could be also having a hard conversation with someone that maybe someone hurt your feelings and you're not able to be emotionally open with them because you don't feel energetically safe with them because something happened. And in order to clear that energy, you need to speak about it. You need to feel safe and be seen and heard and understood in that situation. And therefore, it equals more connection with you and this person. Maybe it's a, a job opportunity that you, you're excited about. Maybe it's creating something in the world that you know is going to do something good for the world. Maybe it's sharing your authentic self online or with your community. And that's super vulnerable. Do you know how rare it is for someone to be their authentic self in this timeline? It's like finding a unicorn in the universe. <laughs> like, it is so rare to come upon a person who is in full authenticity. And this is because, as a society, we have been programmed with so many negative beliefs that make it hard for us to feel safe to be our authentic self. So it's actually very normal for you to feel scared to be your authentic self. Everyone feels this at some point in their life. No one just pops out of the womb and it's like, yay, I'm, gonna, I'm my authentic self and it's safe. I mean, maybe our next generation, because our generation is healing a lot of this and we are, you know, creating a lot of safety for the, for the babies that are coming in. So I'm excited for them. Like a lot of my friends' kids, they are completely their authentic self. But I'm talking about our generation and above, like people who are older than us. Um, and the way I like to think, I think of a lot of times things in like energy form. And the way I like to think of it is like, when you are your authentic self, you're literally allowing universal energy to flow through you uh, unencumbered, which means like without blockages. And negative beliefs energetically create blockages in your body so that the energy cannot move through your body in a fluid way. And... It's like, how do you know if someone is actually their authentic self? I like to say that you can see it in their eyes. Like people who are the, their authentic selves, usually there's like, there's a little bit of a glitter behind their eyes. They're literally shining vibrationally because when you're allowing the energy to move through your body, your vibration is higher and you're literally energetically like shining brighter. <laughs> you know, like when Jesus was uh, on the earth, a lot of people said that he was literally glowing because the vibrational difference between him and everyone around him was so big that people could literally see his aura. 
And maybe it's not that big of a difference in our day, but you can see it in someone's eyes. Like there's, there's like kindness in their eyes because they are realizing that they are fully supported and trusted. They, they're in trust of the universe that they are fully supported and guided. And there's usually like, yeah, just kind of this like glint of like a smile behind their eyes. And you can, I have had people tell me when they meet me in their, in real life, they're like, you're literally glowing. They're, I've had people who listen to my podcast for a long time and then they meet me and they're like, yeah, I just want you to know that like you are so much more beautiful in real life. And it's not necessarily a physical beauty, but it's an energy beauty. It's like literally I'm allowing the energy to move through my body. And the more that you are allowing yourself to release these negative beliefs, the more you're allowing the energy to move through your body and the more you're just yourself. And when you are your authentic self, everything that is meant for you in your life is magnetized towards you. So it's less about doing, this is what I said in the beginning of the podcast, and it's more about being your authentic self. And that being your authentic self, I think one of the main things, especially for me, is to create safety for yourself, energetically, emotionally, physically, all the ways. But I think for most of our societies, we're focusing on energetic and emotional safety. Because if you are trying to force yourself to be your authentic self, and you don't feel safe, it's not going to work. It's just literally not going to work. You're just going to make yourself frustrated. And then, and then probably feel guilty that you weren't able to accomplish it when it, literally it's not about doing, it's about being. So this is the irony in all of it. Okay, I'm looking at my notes because I wrote them all in this very energetically free flow. Um, oh, okay, so another download I had today was like, so one thing about my human design is um, I have, I'm a 5'1", and so the one, ugh, I could go really in deep in this, but it's hard to explain in a very short time. But basically, like, there's something about my human design where no matter how accomplished I am in something, no matter how much I know about something, no matter how many times I've done something, there is going to be this element in me, which is my opportunity for growth, uh, that I will feel like an imposter. And when I read this the other day, I mean, this is something I know, but it hit really close to home. Like, I think it hit on a layer deeper than normal. I was reading some stuff on human design and I was just like, wow, this is so beautiful to read this because I feel like, you know, men are programmed to feel this imposter syndrome. Like if they feel fear or like maybe I'm not good enough or whatever. And they're literally programmed to like do it anyway. Like we even have this expression like man up, just go for it, just do it. And it's like a cell, it's celebrated for a man to feel this like fear of not being good enough and just go for it. And then like us women, this is not so much a conscious thing, but this is something I'm realizing. We are programmed to feel this fear and then freeze and then feel into and then feel all this self-doubt and then find a man to do it for us or to follow a man who's already doing it and I mean I'm just going to own that but that's what I've done in a lot of past partnerships is like you know find men that are doing the thing that I want to do in the world and then just kind of latch on to them and um, allow them to take the lead on it when in reality I am meant to be doing this myself I am meant to be stepping into this myself whether I feel you know energetically like an imposter in whatever way and a lot of this is not um it's not like something that intellectually makes sense it's just like an energy and an emotion that i feel so even if someone tells me like you're so good at public speaking you're so good at this there's always going to be this element of like oh maybe someone else can do it better than me or maybe you know like am i actually doing good enough am i am i actually helping the world in the way that i want to am i actually making an impact and if I'm sharing this with you, because if you have ever felt this, you're not alone. Like we all in some way probably feel this, but especially those of us that have one in our human design pro profiles is just a thing. And when you realize this is a thing, you can just like allow yourself to move through it and kind of laugh at it and not get like super attached. Like for me, I use this as motivation to just be myself, to be more of myself. Cause I'm already myself. Like if you hang out with me in person, if you hang out with me one-on-one -on -one, or in my friend group, I'm like the loudest person. I'm just so myself, myself, so laughing all the time, giggling, always caring about everyone, always want to make the, everyone feel better. And, and when I'm online, when I'm in front of people that I don't know, 
I still am that person, but maybe I'm not as loud. Maybe I could be louder. And that's what I am activating myself to be, is just to be like my weird, quirky, authentic self, which is also super sexy and, you know, sultry and all that. And just do it more. <laughs> just be more. Be louder. Be wilder. And I'm sharing this with you to activate you also. Like, go out and be weird today. Go out and be your, like, weird by, by that I mean, like, things that you know are your authentic self, but maybe conditioning from society makes you feel like it's weird. Just do it. Just wear the thing. Just, like, go, go <laughs> say the thing that you were thinking that is actually really funny and that people will probably find funny if you just say it, you know. But maybe conditionally by society, we're not programmed to say all those things. So, I'm just looking at my notes. Wow, I've covered a lot. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Especially with how in spirit I feel today. Um, oh, something I want to share with you. Okay, so I shared a lot about Josh in my last podcast. I love Josh. And um, the other day I was listening to um, this artist called, I think it's called Face Soul, which is a weird name, like face, like your face, and then soul. Um, and I love his music so much. It's like what I call medicine music. So it's all really empowering, like new earth vibration. And also, it's something that you can just like listen to, like kind of like, it's like folky poppy music, where it's like easy to listen to, you can have going on in the background all the time. And I sent it to Josh and I was like, I would love, because he told me, I want to, I'm, I'm, I want to write a song for you. You know, like he loves making music for people he loves. And so I sent this to him and I was like, I would love for you to make a song for me in this style of music and, um, and like sing it as if you're singing to me. And he was traveling at the time and he was offline and he like didn't see this message. But apparently while he was traveling and offline, he wrote me a song. And then the second he got to his hotel, he just because I told him, I said, I don't want it. I don't want to hear it perfect. I want to hear it raw and real. Like this is my most favorite version of everything you sing. It's like when you're just right next to me and then like you mess up and you laugh about it and you keep going like that for me is like so beautiful and so genuine and so authentic. And so he knows this, that I love that. And so he like immediately got to the hotel and like recorded the song, like right after he had first written it. So like he just wrote it a couple hours before and then he went there and he was still like figuring out how to play it on his guitar because he like composes and writes everything himself. And and he sent it to me and I, I listened to it last night before I went to sleep. Like I just received this message and I just burst into tears because it felt so good to be seen by him. It felt so amazing to, to receive his love because for, for Josh, like, like his human design is literally to raise the vibration of the collective through his voice. <laughs> like that's his soul mission. And for him to write a song which made me feel so seen and it was like and also like so intricately detailed of moments that we've had together that only him and I will understand but even if someone's listening to it for the first time they still will find it beautiful like this double layered which I just I just find so sexy and and also to say things that are so much affirmations for me that I was like listening to it on repeat and then I sent him a video of me just saying thank you and I was just I just like burst into tears and like couldn't talk for a couple minutes maybe a couple minutes but like a couple like 30 seconds I was just like crying on this video and I was just like I love you and thank you for seeing me like it means way more to me than you'll ever know and it's so true like yeah I'm the super powerful badass woman in the world and also my heart is so open and so raw and so real, you know, and so to have people that I love very dearly to be able to receive this love and then create something beautiful in the world and give it back to me. It's, it's like the big, it's like the most precious present I can ever receive, you know. <sighs> I'm just sharing it with you because it really, it really means a lot to me and, um, I'm just really celebrating it and like imagine if more of us in the world were able to to like 
hold this love and receive this and feel worthy of it and give it back and just keep expanding this vibration more and more and more and more so it's exponential that is the kind of energy that will actually heal the world that is so beautiful and i'm here for all of it <laughs> i'm here for all of it and i'm so receiving it with grace and gratitude and it just makes me feel so yummy and melty inside um oh some exciting things to share at the end of this is that my soul is calling me to go to la so i originally was planning to go back to new york like um on the 18th <laughs> new york why did i say new york <laughs> i used to live in new york but literally like i don't know where i am a lot of times like geographically because i've been moving every two days I, the max i've spent in one place is three days uh on this trip i mean besides birdie man but other than that it's like i just keep moving so geographically i am floating vibrationally in the vortex that's what it feels like it's like oh now i'm here oh no i'm here but anyway so i was thinking to go back to thailand on the 18th of september and uh, I have some very dear friends in LA and um, I made some more friends at Burning Man who are in LA and I just kept getting all of this synchronicity and this like confirmation that I meant to go there and so I booked my tickets yesterday and I'm going I get there on the 24th and I'll be there for about a week and then I go home to my babies Afro and Shadu my dog and my cat so um yeah, I'm really excited for for all of the expansion and the adventure and and like this kind of just like this deep unknowingness but it's like this polarity of like I deeply unknow what is about to happen and also I fully trust the universe that everything's happening for me and it's all going to be amazing and abundant and expansive and glorious. <laughs> so um that is the true void of the unknown which is beautiful for me that is the the beautiful polarity of the masculine and feminine feminine energy working together like my feminine energy is guiding me from spirit to go to la my masculine energy is the thing that booked the tickets organize where i'm staying you know it's like i'm doing the thing <laughs> but i don't know what i'm doing but i know I, it's gonna be great <laughs> so i will keep you updated um, I definitely have some like intentions to meet people who are changing the world, people who have the resources, the tools, um, the abilities to work together and collaborate and co-create to make this world an, a more beautiful place. And I have some excitements that are coming through me that I'll share later as they fully develop and manifest into this reality. It's very exciting. Um, the last thing I wrote that I want to share with you is that in my, in my reality, fall, falling in love with someone is actually really easy <laughs> because when you are your authentic self, it's just like you're just this vessel for universal, unconditional love to just like pour through you. So it's for me, a girlfriend told me, she said, Brittany, I think for you, it's less about um, do you love this person? Because like you can love almost anyone. She's like, I've seen you. I've seen you pick people to love that I'm like, why are you in love with this person? Just because of the way they were treating me, like not very nicely or she felt like they didn't honor me and who I was, blah, 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 right? I mean, I've definitely felt this with some of my girlfriends in their pick of partners. So this is a beautiful protection thing that, you know, people you love have over you or have with you. But she said, I feel like it's more about picking someone worthy of a love story with you, Brittany Bond. So like um, someone who actually can hold and receive all of the love that you have to pour out and someone who loves themselves that deeply so that they actually can receive it because the depth of my love that I have for myself goes very deep and I would love to give this to someone else and have it go very deep for them but they only are going to be able to do that if they've gone that deep with themselves first, you know? So someone who actually loves themselves that deeply without ego, it's just this like knowingness that we are these divine creatures, these angels walking on the earth um, from, from the universe. And we're just here to enjoy. Um, 
So for someone to love themselves as much as I love myself so that they can reflect back to me this energy and that it can actually expand. Because in the past, I would choose someone to love and we would have this beautiful love story. But it was like all of my love was just going into them and like not coming back, not expanding. It was just like getting drained into them because they didn't love themselves. So they were using my love to fill themselves up. And then it got to the point where I felt very tired energetically. I felt very very yeah just like not able to keep going with it because it was draining for me and so um if you if i'm saying this to you so that if you would love to have a beautiful love story um the best place to start is with yourself to like have a beautiful love story with yourself and to work on what you need to in order to love yourself even more deeply and to accept yourself and to feel really yummy in your body all the time and to take care of your body <sighs> and in that way falling in love will always be easy um someone wrote in a comment on youtube yesterday Brittany, i i don't know which one you're in love with because i feel like you are just walking in love i feel like you are the epitome of love and so it's just like whoever is in front of you receives it and i was like that's really beautiful i love that Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> it's going to be really funny for me to listen back to this podcast because I feel so, so spacey and so in my body and so like, yeah, in spirit that I'm like, did any of this make sense? Because in my reality, it made sense. Does it make sense in your reality? I don't know. Also, is it going to make sense in my reality later when I edit this? We're going to find out. <laughs> but as long as you're in it, in it on the ride with me that's all that matters right we're doing it together we're figuring all of this out together and we're having fun together that's all that matters is if you're doing beautiful things with people that you love and making the world a better place that for me is mission accomplished <laughs> this is gonna be a little rough because i literally just wrote this yeah where you look is so contagious some people mistake that for dangerous you told me that you would be famous And I didn't bat an eye I can't wait to see you in those lights All blue, let's color you Keeping your aura Only thing you, thing you wear better than your birth, Birthday suit is stardom Think I get why these men are afraid to put it on you Cause you feel like space Don't know which direction is falling I think I'm sick Think I need Medicine that's only found between the moments you breathe in and out. Oh, I, I feel ill. Still got to go play the field. I feel feverish for the earth well building. Now you'll lead the collective, give the sickness direction. Oh, where you look is so contagious. Some people mistake that for dangerous. Listen. You told me that you would be famous. And I didn't bat an eye. I can't wait to see you in those lights. So bonded, how you slip through these borders, making people cough up their authentic emotions that coke, that cold couldn't keep you contained. Soon you'll be global. Quarantine won't work, think that we need, need some new proposals uh, then, yeah, I see how you're aware of more See how you're aware of more than one life could expose, could expose This new earth is a bioweapon, you're meant to explode I had a talk with God, he said that you get his vote I called him, I called him Mother Earth, but you somehow Called on Mother Earth, somehow you picked up the phone I think, I think I'm sick But you're the only cure Luckily you gave me love and Memories galore, I get ill When I think of how, think of how I don't know when I'll see you Your love is airborne The way you look is so contagious 
Some people mistake that for dangerous You told me how you would be famous And I didn't bat an eye I can't wait to see you in those lights Whoa, 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 whoa. Health be damned Health be damned Holding I'm holding you every time. Yeah. It's yeah. That's oh, good. It's going to get more polished, too. Love you.